welcome to Half the Battle! Today we're gonna be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's resident computer expert! Meet Mainframe. This figure was released in 1986 with all original body parts. This toy was from the golden age of G.I. Joe, and it certainly shows. He's got a unique look to him, yet seems appropriate with lots of cool detailing. Just look at the amount of silver paint on all the little molded bits. The knife handle, the gun handle, the little things on his chest, to even the clasps on his gun holster. This is very impressive and nicely done. His color scheme, while not traditionally military, is pretty cool. And I think I know why they picked it. It's grey and black. You know what else was grey and black in the 80s? A computer. He's the Joe's IT guy, and he's literally dressed like a computer, but it's subtle. So I'm more than okay with this. Moving on, I'm not sure why he needs that helmet. It's sorta of weird looking, but it does still fit the look of the figure overall, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Speaking of complaining, there's one thing that should bother me, but it doesn't. He's wearing gloves, while his main job is working on computers. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be too practical. I mean, have you tried typing on a keyboard wearing gloves? However, the gloves do fit the look of the character, so I'm fine with this too. Aesthetics over practicality, I guess. Like most figures from this time, he comes with some great and appropriate accessories. Chief among them is a computer, an early version of a laptop, and it does resemble what people consider to be laptops in the mid-80s. The thing itself has some nice detailing too, including disk drives. He also has a backpack that's, well, I think it's a communication device. Considering he also had a microphone with a hose that attaches to it. Come to think of it, this could be the 80s version of a wireless modem. Yeah, it probably would have been the size of a backpack in those days. And those are his accessories. You may notice there's one item missing that other figures have. A freaking gun! Yeah, this is one of the few figures that didn't come with any sort of weapon. Normally, this would bother me, but it fits for the character. He's a computer guy. He doesn't really need a gun. Besides, he does have one molded on his chest. It's weird how I have to keep saying this with this guy. All the stuff that normally would annoy me doesn't because of how cool the toy and character is. All the little nitpicky stuff just isn't of any importance in this case. Which kinda sucks for me, because that kinda thing is usually my bread and butter. I have got to find something to bitch about! Um, quick, was there another toy of mainframe made? Ha! Ah, Hasbro provides! Yeah, that certainly is a step down. Meet Mainframe version 2. This figure was also released in 1986, with no original body parts. Yeah, as you can see, it's a straight repaint. This toy was part of a Toys R Us exclusive set called Mission Brazil. It came with a very bad audio adventure and five figures. And this toy is proof positive you don't need neon colors to make a figure ugly. I mean, this red, it's just tragic. Yeah, red works on other figures, just look at the Crimson Guard, but in combination with the other colors here... Yeah. Plus, it would make you stand out like a sore thumb on the battlefield. And those were the only toys Mainframe got in the original line. Yeah, we've got a real agony and ecstasy thing going on here. There's one more figure I'll talk about, even though technically it's not mainframe. Though it totally is. Meet Dataframe. This figure was released in 2008 with only one original body part. Yeah, most of the parts come from other figures. Now, this is clearly mainframe, but thanks to Hasbro's stellar record with copyrights and trademarks, he's not mainframe anymore. Data. 
My name. It is pronounced Data. Oh? As for the figure... <laughs> Look how skinny and lanky he is. But that's not even the funniest part. Look at the head. It, it's like completely square. I'd say it looks like the head of a Lego figure, but those are actually more round than this. The thin neck doesn't help either. This all makes this figure go straight into the uncanny valley. You're not looking at a good depiction of a human being. There's too many small things wrong with it, so your brain doesn't accept it quite right. How did they manage this? They came up with a worse figure a full 22 years after the original came out. Oh, by the way, you can thank my Patreon supporters for this one, as I never would have gotten it on my own. Oh, and for completeness sake, yes, there was one more toy made. This time he was called Sergeant Mainframe. It's from 2011, but it was a Collector's Club exclusive, so I don't have it. They redid the Mission Brazil set and thankfully got rid of the red color, but they still used that blockhead, so it's a wash. And those were the toys. Overall, the first one was clearly the best. It was great! In fact, it was so great, it transcended my usual nitpicking powers. No small feat. Other versions, well, they were various degrees of garbage. With that, it's time to talk about the character, starting with the file card. Mainframe started his career in the army during the last year of the Vietnam War. Well, the file card actually calls it um, Southeast Asian Hostilities, but we all know what they meant. He left the army afterwards, got a degree from MIT on the GI Bill, and went to Silicon Valley. But he soon got bored out of his mind, so he jumped services and joined the Marines. The file card doesn't mention how he ended up with the Joes, which is a bit unusual. But considering how tough he is and his computer skills, you can infer the reasons G.I. Joe picked him. Incidentally, the later file cards from 2008 and 2011 omit any references to Vietnam or Southeast Asia. I guess that's because it would make the character older than they would have liked, so they just refer to tours of duty overseas. As far as the comics go, well, there's not that much to tell. He first shows up in issue 58 and gets half the comic dedicated to his debut. Yeah, half a comic. Because as you can see from the cover, other things were happening at the time. Yeah, apart from storyline, they were also promoting the 1987 line, which makes sense since this comic is from that year. So, Mainframe shows up in the comic a year after his freaking toy came out. His debut story is good, but it's certainly predictable. Mainframe and Dusty are on a mission in... Um, Iraqistan? Yeah, Middle East somewhere, where they get a young guide to lead them to their objective. This kid looks up to Dusty, a quote-unquote real soldier, and takes every opportunity to take a crap on Mainframe, saying he's not a warrior and calling him shameful. Yeah, you can see where this is going. Of course, in the end, Mainframe proves that not only he's a badass, but also how useful computer skills are, totally winning over the kid. Like I said, good story, but so very, very predictable. And unfortunately, that's about it for Mainframe in the comic. He shows up in the background every now and then, but honestly, his debut was as good as it got. In 2008, he did get an issue especially written about him and Beachhead by Larry Hama, no less. You see, Dataframe was part of a set that also featured Beachhead, and a comic book. The story is them in the sewers under Destro's castle, trying to upload a virus and having to deal with battle android troopers. It's an okay issue, but doesn't add much to main data. Sorry, data frames character, except that he dislikes rats and insects. So of course he gets covered in them at one point. That leaves us with the cartoon where there was a bit more meat to the character. 
He's introduced in the miniseries Arise Serpentor Arise, and we first see him uh, playing a computer game with dial tone while on duty. Great first impression there! In this miniseries, his most noted appearance was getting stuck in Vlad Tepes's, aka Dracula's tomb with Beachhead. Beachhead, I want to talk to you about your deodorant. What do you mean? I don't use deodorant. That's what I want to talk to you about. Him and Beachhead did interact quite a bit in the cartoon. That's probably why the two of them got that special comic made. Mainframe's most significant episode is Computer Complications. Where he falls in love with the enemy! Yep, he meets a woman who's actually a Zorana in disguise and they hit it off. Oh yeah, it's mutual. They both have feelings for each other and he even lets her go in the end. It's even referenced in a later episode, and even later in the Image comic series, that they had a thing for each other. He appears in plenty of episodes, so the cartoon did right by the character. And that was Mainframe. Overall, a truly great first figure, and a well-developed character in the cartoon. He could have been featured more in the comic though, and he deserved more and better toys than the other ones he got. I'll see you next time, everybody! And hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing? And remember, we're still doing the charity drive. Check out last week's episode for more information.